Hey, Coach, uh, I guess first question was, uh, or is, how was practice today? It was good. Uh, really good energy level. You know, the first bowl practice, sometimes after the travel and the team activity, uh, it's a little bit hit or miss. And I thought our guys were focused and we're excited to be there. And, and we had a good practice. So I, I felt really good about it. Hey, just to follow up, just to follow up on Jacory, is he going to the NFL or entering the transfer portal or is that TBD? My, my understanding is he is, he wanted, he, uh, told us that he wanted to uh, start preparing early uh, for the NFL draft and he didn't want to take a chance of an injury. So, um, again, guys can change their mind. Um, but when he said he wasn't going to play in the bowl, he said it was to begin his preparation for the NFL. Hey Dave, if I if I remember correctly, you mentioned uh, a, a week and a half ago that you had one player who was out for the rest of the year with a season-ending injury. Can you remind us who that is, and and maybe fill us in if anybody else is is going to be out uh, Friday? Um, Eric Russell is out. That um, he had to have a procedure done, um, and it was a matter of you know, doing it early would have him ready for spring football. Uh, so that would be uh, kind of the one guy that we lost. And it was just a matter of uh, that he had to have a, a surgery before spring. And if we waited till after the bowl game, it would put spring in doubt. And, and since he's going to have a chance with, uh, you know, with the amount of guys we're leaving on the O-line, um, you know, he's going to have a chance to compete for a starting job. We thought it was best if he do it early. Dave, uh, I was talking with David Hale from ESPN a couple weeks ago, and, and he did some research, and it turns out that A.T. Perry and Sam Hartman are like the second most prolific quarterback-wide receiver you know, combination in all time for the ACC. What is it that makes their connection so uh, lethal? I really believe it was, you know, two summers ago when uh, Donovan Green got hurt, and even before then, you know, we always knew A.T.'s talent. He's long, he's fast, he's got a great catch radius. Um, and I really thought two summers ago, Sam really poured into him. And then when Donovan got hurt and Atorian had a chance to become the starter, I think all that work paid off. And I think there's a trust between those two. Uh, you know, they've been here five years together, but – they've developed a trust with each other on and off the field more in the first two years than they did in the, the first three. Dave, with uh, Jebionte Nash, it was kind of clear that he wasn't 100% the last three, four games down the stretch. How crucial has the last month or so been with really getting him healthy and out the door, right? I think it's Jebionte, and I think it's a lot of guys on our team that – you know, you go through a 12 game schedule and we did, we had so many close games this year that, you know, towards the second half, last three quarters of the year, we, we weren't able to rest our guys at all hardly. I mean, we had, we've had four quarter games and I think a lot of those guys retired and worn down and, you know, sometimes to get away from it a little bit allows those guys to not just get healthy physically, but also refresh mentally a little bit. So um, I think he's much healthier. And, uh, you know, we probably have eight to ten guys in that category that at the end of the year we're playing, but we're far from full strength. Hey, Coach, since you're kind of – adroit at answering big picture questions. Um, you know, and we talked about it last night with the structure and the calendar and things like that, but also in the last week or two, Mac Brown has brought this up. And last night, Jeff Trailer from UTSA tweeted out at the NCA asking for help with teams poaching other teams players with NIL money. Are you in a position where you can address the social media rumors regarding Sam and him actually going into the portal after the bowl? I mean, I, I don't know 100%. 
um, what Sam's going to do. But I'm sure very similar to issues that Coach Brown was dealing with with Drake May, um, those things are going on with Sam too. There are people right now that are actively uh, through third parties trying to recruit him. So that is going on. Um, I don't want to do anything to hurt Sam. Uh, you know, so that's why I said what I said. I think Sam wants to go to the NFL. Um, he's been made aware that if he goes in the portal, there's going to be some very lucrative NLI opportunities for him. And it's from very specific schools. Um, and so it is going on. Uh, you know, right now with the NCAA, there's basically no enforcement of these things. And there's no reason to, uh, for teams to stop doing that. Um, there's no penalty for doing this. And if Sam decides that's what he wants to do, I wish him all the best. This guy has done nothing but everything right for five years at Wake Forest. And I don't want to do anything to hurt him or what he may want to do. Uh, but to think that that is not actively going on at a consistent level. And it's not just Sam. There's other guys in our team that aren't in the portal that other people through third parties are reaching out to. You know, and how much of it is real, I don't know. But we have really good kids here that I don't think would just make this stuff up. So I don't know what Sam's going to do. I think Sam wants to play really well in the bowl game. He wants to finish his Wake Forest career on a high. Um, and I'm sure he'll take some time afterwards and figure out what he wants to do. And whatever decision that is, whatever choice that is, we support him 100%. That guy's done nothing but everything right by Wake Forest and our football program for five years. So I told him, you know, whatever you do, Sam, there's no hard feelings. Now, I don't I appreciated how Sam's handled it. Uh, I think what's going on behind the scenes right now in college football is, again, it is what it is. Nobody is stopping it, and there's no punishment for doing that. So it's just going to continue and continue. And if this is the way it's going to be, that's fine, but let's not pretend there's rules then. Let's just eliminate the rules and say this is all legal. And then at least we know that uh, people are allowed to do this. But it always becomes a matter of if you're not doing it and you're trying to follow the rules, you're, you're at a significant disadvantage. So I just say eliminate all these rules because they're not enforced anyways. Thanks, Coach. Coach, I guess with, the, you know, as, as you're mentioning, the complexion of uh, the transfer, transfer portal right now to begin with, how impactful is it on a, from an offensive perspective to only have technically one guy from the two deep not playing in this game because of the portal in Christian Turner. It's awesome because we have, <laughs> we have phenomenal young men at Wake Forest. Again, the greatest joy of my job at Wake Forest is the young men that I get to work and coach with every day. And the fact that we have so few guys opting out is just another example of why these guys are just awesome. So I love our players. They're team oriented. Uh, I'm like, I got the best job. I really do. Cause I get to work with these guys every day. And that's why I never want to do anything to hurt them. I mean, if they have an opportunity to do something different and it's going to be good for their future and their families, we don't hold that against them. But uh, I'm really proud of our guys. And Christian Turner wanted to play in this football game. He had been practicing with us up until four days ago. And then again, another school that's been recruiting them out of the portal basically said, if you don't visit this weekend, we're not going to have a spot for you. And again, that's just where the calendar right now is broken. Dave, it seems like in a lot of these bowl games, the I guess the the conventional wisdom is, aside from the, the playoff games, that it's like the teams who want to be there are usually the ones that come out on top, right? How convinced are you that your team wants to be there and wants to wants to win this game? Again, our guys love bowl games. We're practicing hard. You know, I don't know if we're going to win or lose. I mean, we're going to try to win the game. And, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to execute the offense and we got to execute the defense. We've got to execute in the kicking game. And, you know, I'm sure Missouri wants to be here, right? They were two and four. If they were going to lay down, they had six weeks to do it and they never did it. 
So they wanted to go to a bowl so bad. They were four and six and they won their last two football games. Um, and the last one against Arkansas against another good team. So I think this game, both teams want to be here. So I know we do. Uh, I can tell our players do. And I think the, the few number of guys not playing in it is a, a great indication of that. And, uh, you know, but then, you, you know, there's an opponent and you got to play well. So we want to be there. I think Missouri wants to be here. I don't think there's going to be a team that wants to be here more than the other. I think this is just going to be a, a good college football game against two power five teams and two great conferences. And the team that plays better and makes the fewest mistakes is going to win. You guys all good? Anybody need anything else? All right. Thanks, Coach. I've got, War I've got Warren next to me. Do you want him to join now? Would yeah, that that'd help? be great. That'd be great. Warren, they're ready. They're ready for you. I'll text him the link, Coach. He's gonna he's gonna text you the link. All right. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Hey, Coach, um, has the offense been able to pick up its rhythm pretty quickly after having some downtime, uh, you know, with with the time off uh, over the past couple of days and the travel days? How did the offense look today? I think somebody needs to help Coach with that. Can you hear me? There we go. Did you hear the question? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got me back. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I was just saying uh, they we did a nice job today. We've only had you know, really four days off, um, so it wasn't like a, a normal late bowl game where they're gone for a week and a half or something. So it really wasn't a ton of time away. Um, you know, certainly they had breaks for finals and things like that, but we were able to practice intermittently and, you know, um, I think keep somewhat of a rhythm. So it's been, uh, I think it's been fairly smooth. Warren, I know you usually dive into the adjustments uh, after the season and before spring ball, but what areas are you targeting right at this point where uh, you'll be you'll be diagnosing things that didn't go well or as well as you wanted uh, during the season and, and addressing in the in spring ball and fall camp. Uh, yeah, you know we really haven't, like you said, done much of that. You know we'll certainly uh, go back and look at some things. Um, you know, but certainly uh, overall, I think our guys have done a nice job and. You know, we've certainly had uh, some mistakes and things we could have done better in different games, but um, in a, uh, you know, 360 kind of view, we haven't really done much of that. We've just been preparing for Missouri um, with the guys we have and where we're at and getting ready for that game. Is there a part of you that really wants to enjoy having a lot of the same personnel that you have with Sam and the offensive line uh, and some of the skill guys before you jump into a offseason with a lot of turnover? Uh, yeah, you know, you always, you know, we're certainly enjoying being around everybody. And, um, you know, it's been a great group and uh, we've enjoyed coaching those guys and we'll certainly miss them. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the reward for, you know, going to a bowl game is spend a couple more weeks together and go away and go on a trip and do some cool things, you know, before you play the game. And, um, I think the guys have uh, really enjoyed the trip so far, you know, the work and the play. Um, and we've enjoyed being around them. So, yeah, we certainly are going to miss them. Hey, Warren, um, you know, just doing some research, it looks like Sam and A.T., have like the second most touchdowns for a quarterback wide receiver combo ever in ACC history. What's been the key to them building such a lethal combination together? Uh, 
I mean, I don't know if, you know, it's really, I think, just been a matter of that AT has played longer than some of the other guys. You know, I think, uh, you know, the other guys are, you know, Donnie obviously, you know, missed a year. Um, you know, Banks really started playing this year, but uh, I think, you know, he's had a pretty good rapport with all of them. Um, you know, AT's just been here for a while, and to be honest, he lines up in a spot where, you know, because uh, he is to the boundary most of the time. So I think just over time, um, you know, you're going to have a lot more one-on-ones in that spot, uh, especially as people try and stop the run game. So I think if you look at the amount of time they've both played together and the fact that AT sat in the boundary the whole time, uh, it's just, uh, you know, Really, the course of that is the, how, how many touchdowns have really gone over there. Um, you know, so certainly uh, Sam's done a, a great job getting the ball. I think mean, AT is, uh, you know, I don't know if he's been incredibly consistent, but he certainly has uh, um, taken advantage of most of the opportunities. Uh, Warren, Anything just, else for Warren, guys? Warren, just what are you expecting to see from the Missouri defense Friday? What's some of the keys to attacking them and, and making big plays? Uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. Um, they're really good. Um, you know, with the exception of one game against Tennessee, they really uh, haven't given up very many points to anybody. Um, you know, they pretty much shut down Georgia. Um, they're really good up front. They're really good at stopping the run. They're really good at pressure in the passer. Um, they are pretty simple on defense. And as a result of that, they all know what to do and they're usually in the right spot. Um, and it's going to be a, uh, a tremendous challenge for us. Uh, no question. Um, you know, but we certainly, if we don't make big plays in this game, um, we will struggle, no question. Um, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna have to find ways to make some plays and um, and take advantage of their aggressiveness, uh, you know, against the run. Um, you know, we'll do some different things to try and get the ball run and and stay on the field, uh, but. You know, this is going to be a this is going to be a tough challenge. Anything else for Coach Argus? Yeah, Warren. I mean, we talk about them being pretty simple on the on the defensive side of the ball. What's kind of the give and take of trying to, I guess, square peg round hole? If we know this is going to kind of work against this sort of this sort of look, and where's and where's the give in terms of trying to say let's make them uncomfortable and kind of get them out of that rhythm with like being in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they do what they do, and they're pretty good at doing it. Um, and, Guys, you grab know, your they trash. Have, I mean, certainly it's, they have, a couple, you know, they have different calls and, and aren't going to sit in the same defense the whole time. But, uh, you know, I'm sure if we have some success, and, yeah, and to be honest with you, you know, every game we play, you know, people change their defense against us. Uh, you know, we prepare for certain things, and um, I would say nine out of ten games, what we prepare for, they do something different. So, you know, we we have a system. Our guys know what to do. Um, I'm sure they're going to do different things than what they've done all year against us. That's pretty much the standard against Wake Forest. Because uh, usually people think if they sit in their base defense, then they're not going to be successful. So, um you know, we practiced against a lot of different stuff that they don't do, and we practice against stuff that they do. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? You guys all good? All right. Thanks, Coach. Chuck. Hey, the chance, okay, thanks, Hey, good afternoon, Taylor. Hi, Les. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Just walk us through what the last couple of weeks have been like in terms of preparation and 
and, and scheduling for you guys? Yeah, so everyone got back into town on Thursday. Um, we had a lift, um, practiced Friday, Saturday, Sunday, got some really good work in back in Winston, um, then hopped on the plane yesterday morning, um, practiced this morning, um, and uh, yeah, getting ready to go. How's Bush Gardens? Bush Gardens was a lot of fun. Um, I had never been before, and you know, I mean, a lot of the other guys on the team, it was their first times going as well. So, you know, just being able to share that experience with um, my teammates was a lot of fun and definitely something I'll always remember. Hey, Taylor, I know you guys only missed a handful of days from, you know, normal practice because you're playing in the pre-Christmas bowl game. But was there any rust to shake off when you guys went into practice this morning? Um, this morning, I would say no. Um, when we first got back on Thursday and Friday, or excuse me, last Friday, I'd say there there was some rust that needed to be shaken off. But um, we had been practicing the two weeks prior um, as well. So we hadn't taken many days off. A lot of guys were only home for three to four days. So, um, you know, I think being able to practice um, during those two weeks leading up to, to bowl prep definitely helped. Um, make that transition as smooth as possible. Taylor, I mean, the season obviously didn't end the way you guys really wanted it to. Being an older guy, I mean, what's been the message in the locker room to really get some of these younger guys to buy in and keep keep kind of fighting through the bowl game? <laughs> yeah, so I think um, the message right now is, you know, going to a bowl game is a privilege. And, you know, playing in a place like the Buccaneer Stadium, is a privilege. So, I mean, not, not every team in ACC is able to go to a bowl game. And granted, we didn't have the season that we wanted, but, you know, we're in a really cool place with a really cool, really cool opportunity in front of us to play a really good SEC team. So I think none of us are taking this, this opportunity for granted. And um, we got to send the seniors out on, on the right note. Um, you know, we got a lot of older guys and, you know, we, we, as younger guys, we, we owe that to them. So. Is it taking some recalibration and maybe regrouping to realize, okay, we didn't have the season we wanted, but we still have one more chance to put our best foot forward? Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, a lot of the time you dictate your season based on what happens in the bowl game, you know, and that kind of sets the sets the tone for the off season and, and the next year. So I think if we're able to go out there and get it done. I think, um, I think that would be a good good way to go out, and uh, like I said, send the send the seniors uh, out on the right note. Don't take this the wrong way, but the longer you spend around Clawson, the more times you echo his things that he's told us, like the day before. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to to speak on that, uh, do you feel like the the bowl win last year kind of was the, the final memory and the, the lasting impact of that season, uh, you know, the, the result in the Gator Bowl? Absolutely. Um, I think if our season would have ended on the ACC championship loss, we probably would have felt a lot differently going into the offseason in this summer and, and, you know, coming into the season. So I think being able to play in that Gator Bowl and uh, beat a good Rutgers team, you know, obviously, I think, you know, and obviously get some hardware, you know, you're treating that as a championship. Um, so I think, you know, I think bowl games are very, very important. And, you know, we're, we're not, we're not taking this opportunity for granted at all. Is that, Along those things, is, is that something that idiots like us, or, or maybe just me here, uh, idiots like me and, and maybe fans kind of get lost in the shuffle at this time of year when there's so many bowls? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easy to, to compare, you know, our season to, to other teams in the league and, you know, maybe they're playing in, in bigger and better bowl games, but, you know, um, like I said, and like coach Clawson says all the time, you know, we, we treated each week as a one week season and, you know, this is kind of where we ended up and, you know, it's, it, it's easy to compare and, you know, obviously it'd be great if we're, you know, playing in a new year's six bowl, but that's not where we are. And, um, you know, Playing again, playing in a really cool environment against a really good football team and a chance to win a championship. So, you know, this is 
this is where everything this season's led to. And, you know, we're excited for this opportunity. Hey, since you brought up the really cool environment, have you seen the pirate ship at Raymond James Stadium? Not in person, no. Um, All right. But, you know, what was it, 2020 when uh, Brady and the Bucks were playing there? We're playing in the same same environment and uh, same kickoff time, 6.30. So, you know, it's, it's cool as a college guy to, you know, kind of compare, you know, the environment that you're playing in and to, to you know, where you, where you want to be. You know, a lot of our aspirations is to play in the NFL. Um, so, you know, just really cool. I'm really excited. All right. And you mentioned picking up some guys? hardware, Taylor. Uh, have you seen have the, the trophy the, for this for this game? I have not, you know, I'm, we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. You know, we got to focus on on the day in and day out and still put the work in, you know. Um, it's easy to get distracted in a, in a warm weather bowl. Um, a lot of cool things to, to be able to do off the field, but it's a business trip at the end of the day. And, you know, we're going to treat it as such. And the goal, the, the lasting memory of the, the bowl trip and experience will be that game. So, um, you know, got to put the work in first before we can, you know, get the trophy. I've seen some pictures from last year and it kind of looks like a big O uh, treasure chest. It's, it's pretty, it's unique, so. Oh yeah, all right. Well, hopefully, you know, we can put the work in, you know, get a chance to see it in, in person, so. <laughs> Anything else for Taylor, guys? All right, thanks. Thank you, guys, go Deeks.
Hi hey guys, you all there? So, so just a heads up, we gotta, we have to go get on the bus in five minutes to go to the Air Force Base. Um, so practice ran long. So we'll do our best to get some of these. We'll do our best to get some of these guys tomorrow after practice, as well as Coach and Lambert again. So that'll wrap us for today.